So so I was coming from um, Nashville. I had actually just finished a, um, a meeting. Uh, the meeting went well, and uh, I was headed back to Atlanta. And um, I got a call from my sister that said um, that dad had pretty much uh, stopped breathing. The paramedics were, were at the home at uh, my mom's house, and they were reviving him, and uh, he wasn't responding at, at that time. When I got the news that he wasn't responding, um, man, I, 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 you know, I was afraid, of course. One of the weirdest feelings I've ever felt. And I started singing um, uh, How Great Is Our God. I'll never forget it. The truck was just uh, totally silent. And, um, and we were just riding, and I was just singing and crying, and just singing How Great Is Our God. I never, that was just the first song that came to my spirit. When my sister called back to give me the, the update, um, she just said, he's gone, he's gone. Um, Dad passed away. I told my guys, man, let me out. And so uh, they pulled over to the side of the interstate and uh, I just started walking, man. I remember praying on the side of the interstate, saying, God, I thank you for um, welcoming my dad into heaven. Um, we honor you, God, even right now, in a place where we don't understand what's going on. Finally, uh, got myself together, um, got some peace about the matter, and did what, what I felt like I knew I had to do. I just started getting on the business, started thinking about, you know, what type of program he wanted. My dad was a part of KJO, and, uh, you know, I was working on his record at the time. We had never... Uh, actually did a release, so, you know, I was like, man, why don't we do, you know, a, a home going service, but a album release party for him, and let's just give away his music. And so, that's what we did. And so, for a week straight, we just worked to, uh, to get the details, get a poster there, get all the flowers, and everything that we think he would want at a release party. We're there to just make sure mom is okay, make sure everything flows smooth, uh, so I'm really right now, I'm the only boy, and I got all the financial responsibilities, which, you know, my sisters, they could have helped, but I didn't want them to help. I, I, I felt like it would be honorable to take care of my dad and just to make sure everything would be straight. I want this type of song, I want this, I want that, and those details just kept me from mourning, kept me from crying, it just kept me on business mode. After the event was over, after, you know, that was done, and then I stayed with mom a week, make sure we could take care of her, it was back to business as usual. Back to getting to ministry, back to the road, back to k -Joe, back to being a husband, back to being a father, back to being a producer, back to being a singer, back to being a minister, you know? And um, I ministered, man, and I started getting back to things, but I wasn't the same, because I just felt like I had this big hole in my back, man, that I never really came to closure. I remember going back uh, like a year and a half later to the grave site. I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't go. Uh, I was afraid to go, and I went back, and, and I just cried, man. I just, I was just like, man, you know, uh, I'm gonna swallow this, and, and, uh, and, uh, and it kind of put it to rest. I mourned slow because I had to pour out and, and I was about God's business every week, but um, I was dying inside. And so you're trying to be strong for everybody, but man, you, you know, and that's how I start gaining weight and start, you know, just living unhealthy and, 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 and things start happening in my physical body because spiritually I was just incomplete. At that point, you are, you are trying to do the best you can do. Nobody knows that, you know, you'll go to a show, you know, ministry engagement, and, you know, 25 kids come to know Jesus, 25 people come to know Jesus, and, and then you go back to your hotel and cry your eyes out because nobody's feeling your pain. You're there to help everybody else with their pain. I just worked and worked and cried for the next three years. Um, uh, I hate telling this story right now, 
because uh, I've never told a story without crying. I'm surprised I, I made it this far. He was the best uh, man I've ever met. He was a man that was about his business. He was a pastor. He was a singer. He was a dad. He came to every basketball game. He was there for every football game. He was there for every engagement, and uh, not only for me, but for all my siblings. I was thinking, man, was I supposed to be there, you know? Uh, did I not follow the signs, you know? Was I so much about my business that I didn't pay attention to be there at that time? And it was so many things that were, that, it, that were running through my mind that I was like, man, I just, I'm just trying to get this grief off of me. Some two years later from the day he died, I closed the casket in my head and cried just like he had just passed away. And uh, it was tough um, <clears throat> getting through that. And so I, I was like, all right, you gone. All right, I, I, I got it. You know, I got it from here. I take care of mom, I take care of the business, and I, I, I'll be responsible. You're gonna always miss them, but I had to get it out of, the, out of the system, out of my system of, okay, it's okay to move on. I had this ministry engagement, and I remember it was local, it was in Atlanta, and I pulled up to that place, and I felt, like uh, almost like a, like all my breath came back, and I and I started feeling my arms and start feeling my face, <laughs> almost like you were in a bad dream and you woke up, and um, and I was like, man, I'm back. I'm like, man, I feel like I'm back, and that is where uh, the song "Fill Me Up Again" came from. It came from. Uh, you know, not necessarily that I was in sin or that I was doing something wrong. You know, I was doing the work of the ministry, but I was just empty, you know. Um, and I don't care how great your vehicle is, you know, you can only drive so far on one tank of gas. Sometimes, you know, you feel like you're a spiritual superman, that you have so much advice for everybody else, uh, but you just need rest and a refill, you know. Uh, and so I needed that refill. I needed that refreshing. I needed that, 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 that refill. When the song starts explaining, you know, that lately I've been too busy, but I really miss you, friend. It's like, I miss the person that I'm doing this for. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm doing this for Jesus and I miss Jesus. You know, I'm, I'm having all these people to meet you but I miss my quiet time, man, because my quiet time is filled with ideas on how to get people to meet you. And I haven't had just straight communion of just God. I just want to lay before you, and I don't want to think about nothing but just be in your presence. There are a lot of artists, there are a lot of pastors, there are a lot of people in, the, in ministry that are hurting, and they are aching. Uh, but they got to be strong for their people. And some people don't want to show weaknesses. But I think uh, this song will just let people say it's okay. Uh, it's okay to say, you know what, this time, as the pastor, I'm going to be the first person uh, down at the altar doing praise and worship. Or I'm going to be the one that's worshiping today because I need y'all to pray for me because I'm just tired. You just need a refill. Sometimes you just need somebody to call you and say, man, uh, I don't want nothing, man. I just thought about you, man. I'm praying for you. And uh, those, those, those friends that called me uh, during that time, God inspired them to call me, man, because I needed to hear from them. I needed to hear from real brothers, real sisters to say, you know what, man? We ain't calling for nothing. We just, God just put you in our spirit. We just praying for you. I hope this, uh, this song is a blessing to people that, uh, that sometimes you go through tragic situations and you just gotta keep working. The song is called Fill Me Up, and right now, uh, I just want you to enjoy this. I hope you enjoyed this story. It was really to just help somebody 
to say, look, I don't care how high you are. Uh, it doesn't matter how, how notable you are, how strong you look in public. Sometimes you just need a refill. So we ask God, and I agree with, I agree with you, that God will give us both, both a refill. Whenever that time comes, man, that we can humble ourselves and just say, God, fill me up again.